Hello and welcome to the second part of the Motostep tutorial on how to set up your own Minecraft server. Now in this part I'm going to show you how to install your server and also explain some of the files uh, that will be installed and how to use them and what they're for. So let's start with step number one, installing your server. To do this we need to go to the minecraft.net website slash download, the link for this is in the description below, and you'll see a page like this. On the bottom right here there's a multiplayer server. All you need to do is download the file, uh, usually it's going to be the latest file, right now it's 1.7.9. So I'm going to download it, it's going to show up right here. Now, don't click on this yet, you need to make sure that you save this file somewhere where you want your server to be. So, uh, the reason why we do this is because it's actually, it's going to extract a bunch of files that we need to be sure are in a location where we can use them really easily. So to do this, I'm going to create a new folder on my C drive, so I'm going to create a new folder and I'm going to call it Minecraft server because that's where I want my Minecraft server to be. I'm going to open this now and go back to where my file was downloaded and uh, show it in the folder. I'm going to copy paste this into the Minecraft server. Now to do this you can either just drag and drop it from the folder where you downloaded it or you can just uh, use Control C Control V to copy the file. So this is the file I just downloaded. Um, I'm going to double click it now and what will happen is it's going to extract a bunch of files and open this white window um, now you don't really need this right now so I'm gonna close this for now this is this will be the next part I'm going to do, uh, talk about this more in the next part so as you can see it created a bunch of files right here so there's logs world band IPs band players ops server uh, user cache and whitelist so technically our server is now installed but we need to set it up before we can use it. So first of all, let's uh, open the file called server right here. Now you actually will probably have no icon on it. Uh, and it's what it's going to do is it's going to prompt you to open it with some things with a new, um, with a new application. And I suggest that you open it in notepad or also wordpad, but make sure not to open it in word, because if you open it in word, it's going to make things really, really complicated. Uh, so let me just do it erase this it's probably going to look something like this this is probably what you're going to have um, and there is several lines here that you need to be aware of because if you're going to be running your server you need to make sure that you set it up correctly so the first few lines are not really important but this one here level name this is something you should be aware of so right now it says level name world and as you can see level name world refers to this right here this is the world file and this is the default world that you will connect to when you connect to the server now if you already have a world pre-made in single player um, I will uh, show you how to transfer it here in the next step so scroll down a few uh, more videos and one of the videos will show you how to actually um, install your single player world in a multiplayer environment now, right now we're just going to use world, but if you want to change the name, you can basically just type whatever. So let's just say your, your name is called my world. So you'll just type my world and it will actually connect to that particular world. So we'll keep it as this. Now, these are not really important. The next important line is here. The next important line is right here, server port. Now, by default, it's set to 25565. I would suggest you leave it at that. But just make sure to remember this number because you're going to need it when you want to connect to the server or when you want um, to tell your friends what port to use to connect. So uh, just keep this in mind. The next one is is right here, whitelist false. You can actually change this later, but what this means is uh, right now it's set to um, whitelist not being enabled. You can also change it to whitelist true if you want to have a whitelisted server. Whitelisted servers are basically servers where you only allow specific users to connect and you specify which users you want. So for example, if you're running a class or if you're running a very private server with certain friends, you actually want to enable this and set it to true. And true means yes, false means false, uh, false means no. Uh, so uh, set it to true because we are going to be making a whitelist server. The next line right here is actually optional uh, online mode and right now it's enabled as true and I would recommend keeping it as this, especially as I, I'm assuming you're running a legal version of Minecraft. Um, if however it is set to false, it means that anyone can connect to this server without being authenticated by Minecraft uh, the company. So in other words, um, let's just say you have a user that you ban from your server and it's, a, it's an online server where online mode is set to false. 
Now what happens is this user can reconnect to your server with a different name and different IP address and because it, uh, you haven't banned them on Minecraft server but you only banned them on your server, they will be able to reconnect to your server again just using different credentials. So uh, this is only useful if you're running a cracked server, which I'm assuming you're not doing because it's illegal. Uh, so set it to true, make sure this is set to true. Next line right here, PvP true. I suggest you leave it as on as true because PvP is fun. Minecraft is all about uh, PvP. So keep it as it is. But if you want to have only PvE server with no uh, player to player combat, set it to false. Game mode, uh, which you can also change later, but game mode zero refers to um, survival mode. If you want to have a server that's purely creative mode, where only creative mode is used, set game mode to one. One is creative zero is survival next line right here maximum player so that's how many players can connect at once right now it's set to 20 now this depends on how fast your connection is and how much ram you have if you're running this from a personal computer on, on a residential um internet connection like dsl or cable connection you may want to keep this at 20 or even 10 because it's going to be pretty intense um, if you have a university connection or if you have uh, like a really really fast work connection because you're running this from your work uh, then you can send this to up to like a thousand people and the last line i would actually suggest changing is right here motd refers to message of the day and this is basically the message that you get when you connect to the server so i'll just say welcome to uh, my server so that's my message so what you do now is you save this and you close it now let's talk about other files. So banned IP and banned players. Whenever you ban a player, their credentials will appear in this window. Right now I don't have anyone banned, so there's no one here, but I'll show you what it looks like later. Um, ops are basically names of players that you've given um, op credentials, meaning that they can actually use specific server commands and modify server and stuff like that. So um, ops are basically the moderators of the server. Um, User cache you don't really have to worry about. I honestly have no idea what it's even used for, but whitelist is where all your whitelisted users will appear. So if you're running a whitelisted server, all their names will appear here. Now you don't have to actually modify any of these files because there are certain commands we'll be using uh, that will make this automatic. And the last folder right here is logs, which is basically logs for um, the server that, you know, you can use to keep track of things. Like all the chat will show up here. If you're a teacher and you may want to uh, keep track of what your students are saying, you can also actually read some of the stuff here. Um, and that's pretty much it. Those are the files you need to know about. So this is it for this video. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to start your server and also how to connect to your server. Uh, so thank you for watching. Please subscribe to my channel and check out some of my other Minecraft videos that I'll be posting as well. Bye bye.